Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To all the viewers, uh, as we've started, you can see straight away, we've got a split screen. It's a new setup. And my, we've only got two panelists, myself, everybody knows. Uh, maybe getting a bit bored of me as well now on screen. Uh, but, uh, mashallah, with me, I have brother Akil. Brother Muhammad Akil. Um, I've been in touch with him for a while. But as I've become more fond of him, I've come to realize uh, an incredibly talented and gifted individual who has a wealth of experience. And from those many experiences that we will hear from, inshallah, one of them is, the, is what we want to discuss today, which is to do with fitness, health and diet. Uh, knowing and appreciating we're in the month of Ramadan. For many, this is the month where we use a, as an opportunity to lose weight. Uh, for many of us, it, we become diet conscious in this month particularly. Um, obviously because we're starving ourselves. Mm -hmm. For many, maybe the fact that we enjoy more food in this month of Ramadan. And rightfully so, because the blessings of Allah shower in this mercy in this month so much. We're having those foods and those mm -hmm. dishes which we probably had once in, in, in a blue moon. Yeah, or once a month or when you would go out somewhere for something special. Hey, mum's making something special every evening. So it's, it's, it's a mercy of Allah. So, uh, Brother Akil, let's, let's start with yourself. Your beginnings uh, and of some of those experiences we've talked about yeah, definitely. Uh, in, in the past. Before we get into the health, <laughs> fitness and diet, which is, the, which is going to be the main chunk of our discussion yeah, today. Inshallah. So, so, alaikum alaykum to everyone. Um, so, yeah, so uh, I just turned 45. Inshallah. And Alhamdulillah, the journey's been, you know, it's been challenges uh, growing up, mm -hmm. facing difficulties from financial issues, from family issues, um, even job related, which all impacts your mental health. Yep. And I think one of the biggest things that for me as growing up, losing so many members of my family mm -hmm. from my cousin mm -hmm. when he was about 17 years old, when I you know, lost him to cancer. Okay. Uh, I think things from then on spiraled for me. Um, because he was that close, it, it feels like he was only with me, like mm -hmm. he's with me now if, or yesterday. Many people actually don't realize the impact it has on their it's mental health. It's a huge, huge. I mean, I did not speak to anyone for five years. Allah. I couldn't say, I couldn't turn around to my mom and dad or my auntie and uncle, tell them how I feel about this mm. loss. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I suffered in college and university as a result of it. And then basically from then on. And uh, if I'm not wrong, in those days, there wasn't much awareness on mental health Nothing. relating to let's say uh when you're mourning the the loss of a loved exactly. one exactly especially if you have to be strong for the family because mm. if you're going to be the child who's going to be supporting the family it's, yeah. it's absolutely difficult to talk about it. Mm. and seeing my dad who was a bus driver all his life struggle through thing uh, you know to put food on the table and everything mm -hmm. it was like i have to step up and be strong there's no time for me to cry or you know, moan, you know, this loss that I've just had and stuff. So in my room, I used to just quietly in the corner, just cry at night, but never show it to anyone else. Mm. And that had a massive mm -hmm. impact, mm -hmm. which now over the years, it, had I gone back into that situation, I'd be more open and talk about it. So Alhamdulillah. And you would have a lot more support, uh, professional support as well. I've never had uh, professional support because I never knew who to approach. Uh, because Fair. I never looked into that side of mm. side of things, mm -hmm. and it was always like, should I talk about it? Shouldn't I talk about it? But then, as I was growing older and older, and different walks of life uh, experiences that I was getting, mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to hide any aspects of my life. I am what I am. You know, I'll go through whatever one Allah Subhanahu wa Taala blesses me with these challenges, uh -huh. and I either uh -huh. take it as a blessing or as a curse. Uh -huh. If I take it as a curse, I ain't going to move forward. If I take it as a blessing, I know whether I fail or pass, in the failure, there's success. And in the success, there's a reward. So, uh, so I you, look at all these obstacles. See, hearing that from somebody like yourself, <laughs> uh, it's, it's really touching. Because if I was to say those words, or, or an imam, somebody in an Islamic attire, mm -hmm. it's more like, oh, regurgitating information. It's yeah. Not. yeah. But what you really said, in essence, is summarizing so many prophetic teachings. Yeah in a few quick sentences. Exactly. I and mean, the messenger said a lot, he was quite sorry. open about discussing uh, tribulations. Yeah. That whenever a lot of been afflict somebody, see, there's a, it's, it's an entire study, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How we approach trials, tribulations, losses. Yeah. And like you beautifully said, that even if it's a loss, something that didn't work in your favor, 
even then, Allah is worked in your favor, whether exactly. you understand it or not. Exactly. We may not appreciate it. Yeah. But Allah's planned it for you, for it to happen in that particular way. Yeah. Because we don't see the stages after that. Allah does. Exactly. And, and you know, like they say, everything's planned for you and destined, and we don't know what it is. Mm. But all we have to believe that the path that we take, there's a reason for it. Yeah. We make the word that whoever our paths cross with is for good reasons. But at the same time, when if it's a bad reason, and it comes to that point when it's a bad reason, don't look at the bad points. Look at what you've come out of there or what you've escaped from. You know, Alhamdulillah, that's where it is. Like I, I used to like when when like my cousin died, I always used to like for some bizarre reason used to pray for death. I used to mm. say, "I'm ready for you. Mm. You can take me." I remember the times when my cousin had cancer, and Allah. there was blood in his water. I used to drink that blood, and you know the water, thinking that I'm going to get it and he's going to be saved. Allah. And I went through that. That's touching. Yeah. Very touching. And then when I had to bury him, and that's the, and you're the last person to see the face before you put the last, you know, the slab on. Mm. It makes you think of everything differently. And then oh, after God. after that, a couple of years after that, I was like, obviously I didn't speak to that many. I tried to support my family and everything. Mm. And things just went from there. I got into the gym. Uh, one of one of my uh, tr people who used to train me there. Uh, Alhamdulillah, he he went out of his way to get me in shape and stuff. Right. Um, I got into shape. I was about twelve stones back then. Uh, this is going over seventeen years ago, though. Okay. <laughs> uh, twelve stones. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Alhamdulillah, you know, it was like I felt good. It was the first time for me to go into this gym environment where, mm. which which helped helped me a lot. But before I got to that stage, I didn't know where I was. There were times. So when you say it helped you a lot, are you particularly referring to your mental health in this? From the mental aspect, it, mm. it took me away from my problems. Like I knew the problems were there, but that hour, two hours that I was in the gym, it, it allowed you to focus time. on yourself, to work on focus. yourself, to rebuild. Exactly. Mm. And then after that, like. I still ended up with more family problems, family issues, dad okay. not being well, mum not being well, having to leave university to look after them. So I never got a degree or anything like that. Um, and then I just worked all, all my life from working at Royal Mail, doing admin jobs, then working in the NHS, doing IT jobs, then trying to set my own businesses up. Okay. But I was one thing where it was like, I was always passionate about learning. So I would go to the library and just sit there for hours, pick a random book up and learn it. And okay. I'll be like, Anyone can ask me about anything from that book All and right. I'll understand whether it's science, whether it's body, anything. There may be something that I'd be interested in. But it's that quest and that yearning to just learn. Just learn. Because if you think about it, Islam is about knowledge as well. Mm. And even though they say it was spread by the sword, it wasn't. It was spread by the message. Of course it was. And when, you peop when people understand where that mm. message came from and what the power of that message is, they know that you have to seek knowledge. It's like in the mentioning forms. of the Messenger of Salatu Islam that Utlubul Ilm. Well, mm. even if you have to go to China yeah. to, 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 to seek that knowledge. I, it's, some people have questioned the uh, strength and the authority of that hadith. But in essence, if you just take the lesson from it, yeah. even if you have to travel and go to the extents of the universe, mm. to the world of the globe to go seek knowledge. Alhamdulillah, we now live in a global village. We live Your local uh, library will have every book from for every yeah. walk of life. But not just that, your local library is Google. <laughs> yeah, right now, yeah. Or now nowadays AI technology, you can ask it any questions and it pops up the answer. But it's about, about having that yearn for learning. You need to have that Which learning. is what the yeah. new generation, if anything, they want to learn quickly from this podcast so far. Exactly. Is that you never give up. You can't. You can't. And I'm, I remember you mentioning mm. like, you you've always been trying <clears throat> to help people. Yeah. Even if you've not had the skill set. Yeah. But you would go back, do your reading. Exactly. Come back. Yeah. Give them the support that they actually need. Exactly. Because sometimes, I mean, in my in, in my experience, mm. people have asked for, the, like I used to ask for help and mm -hmm. I always used to get a rejection. Okay. So then I it got to a stage where I said, there's only two people who are going to help me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by giving me good health and the energy to get up to pray and, and do things and myself. I have to get myself up to pray. Yes. I'm not going to wait for the call to come and say, the call has come, you come and pray. Mm. I'm going to be ready before that call comes. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I need to be in a position where in my heart, I know that my niyat and my intentions are clean, that I'm ready for that, that task and stuff. And then, I mean, don't get me wrong, over the years when a lot of things happened, I started believing in my own religion. 
I literally stopped believing, even though I went Hajj at an early age and stuff, went Umrah at an early, went Baghdad with dad and stuff back in the days. And I, it was a point where I resented everything. I was like, Fulana's doing haram, Fulana's doing haram, he's doing haram, mm, and mm, mm. he's getting barkat, he's getting this house and that house, and he's suffering. And here's me, even if I have a pound and, I, and I'm trying to help somebody, I'm not getting anywhere. Why? Like, I remember back then in Manchester City Centre, there used to be a shop called MVC. And, he, okay. and, I, and I was saving up for a game. I, I'm, I'm a big ga uh, gaming nerd and stuff. And <laughs> I was saved up so much money for it. And I went, so the distance from the, the entrance to the back, and it was, I remember clearly it was, it, was, it was a Jummah as well on that day. Okay. I thought I'll pop in before I go read uh, Jummah Namaz, and then I'll, I'll go home and chill out, play the game and stuff. I was at the bright at the back, and this guy comes up to me and says, and he only said, I only eat on a Friday, brother, can you help me? Allah. And he was a black man, and he goes, brother, I only eat on a Friday, can you help me? And I'm like, you only eat on a Friday? So in my heart, I was like, I've just saved this money for X, X amount Again, of times. Yeah. Yeah. It's about, about a month or two saving up for this. Shall I give him all of it or whatever? And all I remember is this. I turned to my side to get my wallet out to mm. give this person money that I don't know. And I literally, as a matter as I turn around, he's not there. So the distance was a good meet, uh, like, I'd say a couple of two, three minutes to mm. walk mm. out the mm. door and he, it was disappeared. The security guard stopped me on the way out, said, we need to show you, uh, we need to stop you and do a check on you. I'm like, why? Because you've been stood there talking to pretending to talk to someone for half an hour. I'm like, what do you mean for half an hour? There mm. was a guy there who was asking me for money. I looked around city centre Manchester for that person, couldn't find him. Allah. And it was like, bring him. And then after... See, those, those... It could possibly said Allah sent someone or something to put you through that trial. Yeah. And this we've experienced, the only Allah described... Uh, hadith mentioned as well that Allah will send malaika or even jinnat in the human form just mm. to put you through a test yeah. and see how you, you come out my father I remember mentioning he said one time he was in the haram he's making wudu and because he lived there for a year in right. Saudi Arabia he goes on making wudu and somebody tapped me on my back and said stop wasting water mm -hmm. Well, I turn back, no one there. <laughs> no one there at all. Otherwise, you know, if you're straight, if you turn back, you know somebody's walking away yeah, or yeah. to the right or the left. You pick him up, no one. It goes, but till today, my father says, it's as if Allah sent someone or something just to give me that polite reminder, reminder don't waste water. Yeah. It's how precious that little life and that one moment is. Exactly. Allah. I mean, even after that, my experience and what, what you're saying is, I still didn't believe in a lot of things. I literally did not believe. Mm. So even when things got really down to the bottom of me, my need was always clean. Okay. But I kept looking at everyone saying they're profiting from everyone. And why I, am I not getting it? Yeah. Why am I not getting it? Because in the massage, you told give donations, allow it increase. Allow increase it increase, everything. Be more you know, like my family's thing was Jan Jai Iman na Jai. Hmm. That was always always what my, my dad and you know my parents used to you say. You want to translate that for viewers? Some, so you may have all viewers that don't, you don't understand that. So basically, your life can go, but your iman and honesty cannot disappear. Your faith doesn't. Yeah. You don't let go of your so faith. So unless it's you, unless you're going to put honest food on the table, don't put any other food on there. If it's haram, oh, don't beautiful. put it on. The, it's as simple as that. Even if you're starving, you do not put haram money on the things. So even with being brought up in that kind of environment, mm. I was still at a point where everything was going wrong for me and everything. I was like, I don't believe this. I don't believe in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. I don't believe this. I literally resented for about good a couple of months i wouldn't even say a couple of months i think it was like a couple of weeks to be honest but it felt like a lifetime it was not until the moment mm. where i read namaz and I, and I went to sleep and i heard the azan in in my it was that realistic i woke up in my dream mm. and then basically it was basically every one of my so in the dream state you're waking up in my dream state okay wake up and i'm in a desert on a mountain and you know in the in pakistan you get the uh, the wooden munjis yeah, yeah i was yeah. literally waking up from there behind me was all the family that had passed away in my lifetime or even people that i didn't know and we were all walking towards the home sharif 
that that from then I woke up the following day. I was in tears. I read the Hajjid Namaz, read Fajr, and went on my way. Didn't make anything of it. Okay. Four or five months after that, I was still feeling a bit. You know, it's just, it's just a dream. I don't. I didn't look into. You had your it. doubts. Yeah. I still had my doubts. Okay. Because things were still going, still mm, going bad mm, for me. I mm. didn't understand who to ask questions, which Imam I could. Because back then we used to go to Victoria Park Mosque or Dar al or any 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 mosque uh, I was nearby. And then it was at the point. The culture where, back then was different. Exactly. Imams were different back exactly. then. Exactly. They had their own thoughts. Also, everyone had their different schools of thoughts and stuff. And you're like, well, who do I listen to? See, back then, <laughs> I think what, what a lot of people not, have mentioned when I, when I spoke to people of, of your generation, of your age, the it wasn't they weren't approachable mm. as much. Neither did yeah. they spend much time in public tackling no. uh, communal issues, yeah. contemporary issues. Yeah. Therefore, you know, the, the generation felt. That void, that gap. Exactly, it felt more political than anything else. Ah, okay. More, okay. it felt like they had their own needs that they had to do, whereas we didn't know from a community aspect and as a, as a human being, what questions we can and can't ask. Mm. Like we needed to understand our religion to better ourselves, but mm. how do we go about it? Because it feels like we're born in a Muslim family, we should know everything, but that's mm. not that's that's not the case. And then, Alhamdulillah, it was at a point where. Things were really bad. Okay. And I slept without namaz. I didn't pray namaz for about a good two, three weeks. Uh, I was like, what's the point? And then in my namaz, I was in Medina, uh, in my dream, in Medina. And I was like, you know, the the, the green carpet where everybody wants to pray at and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I was there giving people way, saying, yeah, yeah, you go there. And every time I kept going back and back. And then all of a sudden, I get a tap on my right shoulder and this person dressed in white sits next to me and I remember the words like if it was a real person telling me it goes in your life you will have tests but you cannot give up on any of them mm. and that changed me so hard. from then on I was like why am I going to hide my life or my pain so that's yeah. that's the drive that's that became your ethos yeah, yeah. So hard enough. that for me was so like hard. Allah's put me on a journey Mm. For whatever reason, yeah. why am I going to hide the bad points of my life? I know people say you shouldn't talk about your bad or experiences that you've been to. But if yeah, I don't, yeah. how is anyone else going to learn about them? Exactly. How is some, somebody not going to learn about my mistakes? I mean, even as, as we're speaking right <coughs> now, and I'm hearing it for the first time, I'm finding inspiration. <laughs> Let alone how many others that would be watching this would be no, finding inspiration from these I words. Mean, that If anything gets anything out of this today is... Your journey is different to anyone's, mm. you know, but we all have kind of a same path. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're all going to be six foot under, you know. How we decide to be there is your choice, mm. you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all the knowledge that we need in one book. And whether you look at other religions or whatever, you will understand how important every aspect, even breathing, is to improve your life. And then... The biggest thing over after that is, you know, obviously after, after all the signs that I had, I still mm, had doubts, mm. and I, even if even after that dream. But one thing I always kept to myself is, I'm never going to lie about my life. Well, it is what it is. If I'm lying about my life, then I'm lying to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that I don't approve of the life that He's given me or the journey that He put me on. Mm. So why am I going to do that? Okay. Why am I okay. going to stand in front of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and say, you know what, I lied about my life because I wasn't happy about what You gave me? You know, that's that's a big bit. Like you can't you can't do that. And if if our See, again again very uh, inspirational to even hear that from from someone, um, especially for this podcast, for example. Let me let me just speak to the viewers for a moment. All the podcasts we've had in the past, it's been myself, Hafiz Fahim, all these imams and shiuch. And what we mention, you know, it's like a, a good friend of mine put. You know, this is like the God Squad. But everything is going to be discussing, yeah. <laughs> It's going to be of the same nature. Mm. To hear it from a different point of view, it hits differently. Yeah, and and uh, and I really appreciate that you, that you even sat here sharing. And for many people, it's not. You gotta have quite a bit of courage to share. Yeah, that aspect of your life, and this emotional journey that you've been on. Some people will will sh will, will will actually be scared to to mention it. Yeah, and you need to have the courage. Yeah. But I think the intention that we sat with and I knew it would be uh, engaging is because I ultimately wanted to inspire in a different way. Mm. 
And Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah for being here. No, it's, it's, it's a pleasure. Alhamdulillah, it's like I said, our, our paths cross for a reason. Yeah. We know, we don't know what the reason is until you put yourself into that situation. Mm, mm. You know, we could be on one path, but then all of a sudden, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will detour you to another one for a better reason. Mm. We don't we don't understand. An that. example of that is like the many <coughs> jobs that you've had. So you you yeah. dropped out from universities, yeah. attained, then went to a post office, exactly. Then yeah. uh, NHS, yeah. And currently, for those that do not know that are listening right now, <laughs> brother Keel, mashallah, is multi talented. And uh, in so many ways. <laughs> so he actually does photography, professional I, photography for yeah. weddings and things. I do wedding, corporates, uh, photos and videos, uh, storytelling. And I believe well. you were doing some for NHS as well now, aren't you? Yeah. So mm. I work as a cancer uh, cancer navigator. I deal with cancer patients a lot and any video. Actually, what particularly cancer? Because you mentioned your cousin uh, passing away from cancer. Is that yeah. is that a link between that or? So it's all kind of the same kind of pathway. He had bone cancer. Okay. So basically, he was complaining about his knee pain for a long time. Had his X-rays done. X-rays didn't show anything. And what happened was the so you, so you know when you have the the joint in between mm -hmm. and there's a liquid that protects it. That that liquid had ruptured. Okay. And it was going on to the bone and the side so all he had was bone on bone grinding Allah. so as the knee was playing football and stuff all he did was grind it into the bone and that seeped into the bone so it went into his blood and everything and you know one thing though <clears throat> this i mean i get teary about it because i'm so sensitive about it but it's a, it's basically right for two years he had cancer two years but no one was no, no, he was in hospital. He was in Christie's for almost a year and a half, two years, okay. fighting, uh, fighting this cancer. And every day he used to say, today's my day. But not Allah. today's my day that I'm going to die, but today's my day that I'm going to make the most of my life. And oh, I, I remember it's like, um, um, I don't know if you know Kari Mabasha. Yes. We all grew up together, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. Uh, him and my cousin's name was Nabil. Mm -hmm. And we used to do Talawat and Quran. She even tried to learn Nats and stuff together and stuff. And for so many years, like he was like, no, today's my day today. Like doctor came and said, you know what? You've only got a couple of hours to live. And he said, no, when my time comes, my time is going to come. Mm. Now is not the time. He fought fought so much. Even like he's a he was a big a biggest example, massive Man United supporter. All right. His friends uh, um, accidentally thought he was an uh, Arsenal supporter. Okay. So they gave him a signed shirt of Arsenal, <laughs> and he wore it. He did never. He never said no. I'm not an Arsenal supporter. Okay. He wore it because it made everyone else happy, and it made him happy as well. That that everyone happy. So everyone so tried, and that's I mean, a person. You, you you dropped a line saying, "Look, today's." My day. Yeah. I make the most of the day I have. Today. Today. Because tomorrow's not promised. So Again, that's a prophetic teaching. Yeah. Nabi yeah. Salatu Wasalam mentioned that what's to happen, no one knows. No one knows. What has passed, yeah. you make forgiveness for that. Yeah. But you live the day every day in the present. Yeah. As Because every breath you take is an opportunity Allah has given you. Alhamdulillah, it is. It is. So hard and, yeah. and for especially a, a cancer patient who knows who could be going any day. Any day. To say, I mean, there was that um, that uh, that Australian uh, cancer patient, was it who who uh, who donated? I think ev all of his wealth, which went into. Was in, that in, recently? I can't remember if it was recently. Uh, the the name's not coming to mind. Do you remember? <clears throat> Is um, a billionaire basically, mm. and he donated everything before he passed away. Wow. So okay, so as. As he's, the time's getting closer, it was an inspiration to the world. He's donated everything, but yeah. now he knows he's going to be leaving. Yeah. So now you can imagine, Ali eh? Ali Banat, that's the oh, one. Okay. And you could you could imagine how him emotionally, how charged he would be. Yeah. To make the most of the twenty four hours he has. Exactly. Because the thing is, until that point happens to a person, mm. you don't realize how valuable every moment, every moment Allah. of your life is. Allah. Even Allah. though it's the teachings of it is in the Quran and the mm. hadiths mm. and stuff like that, we don't embrace it. We don't understand until it hits home. Until it I like hits to say home. the uh, penny yeah. drops. Yeah. On the day when my cousin died, he basically. Asked for forgiveness from everyone if, if he ever did any mistakes. Shohan. Shook everyone's hand Shohan. and he said this. He's come to take me. Pointed at the direction. Shohan. He said he's come to take me. Shohan. Shohan. I think for, for the viewers, for 
especially the the uh, youngsters for them to appreciate these words from somebody like yourself mm. who's, who's actually been through that journey with your cousin yeah been there with him for those two years and even suffered after he had gone yeah to make the most of the day every day is 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 a new opportunity yeah. Allah's when the sun rises it brings hope exactly it brings light exactly that's light should should should, should penetrate yeah through you your body your soul giving you energy every day to get up start fresh is. and go out i mean we at times it feels like we become complacent we are very too much so much so that we haven't got you have, you have youngsters are suffering from depression yeah mental health disorders and one of the basic, basic reasons because they're at home yeah they're not willing to they're on out. phones all the time and stuff and not not seeing the real world itself like I used to get stressed and one of the things I used to do was just find a bench, sit there and watch the world go by. Mm. So much you can learn from okay, this. Okay, you're gaming. World. You said you're, you're a big gamer. <laughs> yeah. When did that trigger and, and how does that impact somebody sat behind a closed room, lights off, just there bashing it so for bas- hours? Basically, so me and Nabil and a few other people around the mm. world, we got together back in the days, we used to play a game called Counter-Strike. Oh, uh, so we, we had teams. Which I that. played that during my GCSEs. Yeah, an Unreal <laughs> tournament back in the days. So we used to play competitively. Uh, so our name... Actually, let, let, me, let me interrupt you quickly. <laughs> I want to get it off my chest. So we had GCSE exams running. <laughs> and during the breaks, we were going to the IT room and we would connect all the computers. Yeah. So we had two sides to the IT room. So we had the left wing, the right wing, and then we should all jump on Counter Strike. Yeah. Oh, that was amazing. Amazing game, and we used to play it so competitively. We had a team in Morocco, we had a team in China. Okay. We even had a website and everything. Uh, our name back then for the for the team was Touch Me and Die, uh, but obviously when my cousin passed away, everything that we did was called Today's My Day, and he was a, a big aspect of of the thing. And we, our main purpose of the setting of the gaming oh, that team. That name rings a bell. Today's my day. Yeah, today's my day. Dot wedding is actually your website, isn't it? Yeah, today's my day. So ev- anything that's today's my day is basically my brand. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So, so the aim was basically I wanted to fulfill Nabil's dreams because mm. our dream was simple. We wanted to be successful to have a roof over our heads and food on the table, halal food and like honest money. And we wanted to basically then travel the world helping anyone, whether they were in debt, whether they were struggling, rebuild their lives and walk out their lives. Not tell them what our names are, not tell them what our religion is or anything. We just wanted to be successful and just fulfill that aspect and just walk out people's life. And then make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, you know, keep everyone, everyone safe. That was, and it still is to this day, the same dream, even though it's been struggling. I gave up on that dream after after he passed away and stuff because I didn't know what, okay. what what to do. And again, it was a, uh, after ten years in the NHS. It was a, it was a dua. So Allah subhanahu wa taala. I know I can be a cheeky little git at times, yeah. But give me one sign, one sign to make me leave this job, yeah, and follow a dream. And all of a sudden, my cousin sends a picture of me and my cousin a few days before his death, and I didn't know that picture ever existed. Okay, and. I looked at the picture on the phone and I was like, wow, okay, if this is not a sign, I don't know what else is. This, this, but then still I was like, you know, Allah, I'm still a bit cheeky, yeah? Give me one more sign, just one more sign. And, 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 I'll, and I'll leave work now, yeah, and I'll pursue the, the, the ambitions and stuff. My mom phones me. She goes, okay. meaning I'm remembering Nabil today. Okay. That's all she had to say. All she had to say, left work. <laughs> Made sure everything was okay. Left work, and then from there, I, st- uh, I everything I've up to now, photography, video wise, I'm self taught. Taught myself, picked up my camera, first Canon 7D, asked questions. I asked top photographers as well. Only one person ever replied back to me, hmm. and because it was, it was a point in my life where I was that. So let's 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 for my own record. Mm. This is the changing point now. This is a changing now, point. So far in the last half an hour, we've discussed what happened. Yeah. Now moving towards how things started to turn in your life now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. go on, Bismillah. So still with the problems, issues, family issues, mm. financial issues, mm. and stuff. I still wanted to build my dream. So the promise that I made to my cousin and all of us that had a little promise that we're going to be successful, travel the world and help people. I said, okay, let's get back on, on okay. track. Started learning photography by myself, started doing small weddings, 
started working more and more on there. People said, hey, your, your pictures are better than the photographers that we've hired. Would you like to be paid for this? Okay. And I was like, hmm, why not? <laughs> I need the why? money. So from there, Alhamdulillah, I started using the money and still helping other people when I used to get it because I had no concept of like business structure or anything uh, okay. at, at, th at that time. And then I moved forward, started working more. And then over the period of t like 10 years, 13 years, Alhamdulillah, I've been freelancing for different companies, um, bought my own gear, Alhamdulillah. Mm, uh, hope, mm. Inshallah, soon my own podcast channel will be starting, uh, where I'll invite other people, including yourself, Inshallah. Um, so there's a lot of plans that I have, but okay. I want to help the community to understand that just because I didn't have them resources and I've got the resources yes. now yes. that I can help other people use them hmm. to build their futures, Subhan. inshallah. Subhan. So, yeah, and then basically I, st I set up the Today's My Day brand uh, from graphics design, uh, digital work and so on. Hmm. But I was still working a nine to five job because I needed to have a secure income. That, that, that steady income. Yeah, yep. exactly. Hmm. And then over the over the period of time, I, I was offered a lot of shoots, which I wouldn't want to do. like filming or videoing uh, women half naked and stuff like that. I was like, look, no, no matter how much you pay. The shaitan side of me was like, bro, they're offering you like two and a half, three grand a year for like a 20 minute shoot, which you can just do an edit in, in an hour. Why are you turning it down? But it's like, Man, yet this, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. So That's I've beautiful. done other shoots for like, like models who are like well-dressed, mannered and stuff like that. And it, you know, I, I tell stories in terms of like document people's journeys. And I'm part of that, whether it's a Hindu wedding, Sikh wedding, I've done Jewish weddings, <clears throat> all sorts. And I've learned from everyone's experiences on, on what they go through. And Alhamdulillah, I, I just love it. I, I love can I, can I ask, what's, what's the power of earning halal risk? So that example you just gave where yeah. you have the opportunity to do photography fee for models. Yeah. A quick two hour, three hour job, you would have made four, five thousand pounds. Easy. Easy, yeah? Easy. And you've never probably made that much in an hour. Yeah. And you're still struggling, as I understand some bits, as you've described. Baraka in risk. Yeah. What have you seen? The way I can explain it it's, it's in simple terms is how quickly would poison kill you? Ah, okay. Just okay. imagine that. You put poison in water and you drink it, how quickly are you going to die? Hmm. That's it's, it's the easiest way I think about it. So I'd rather have that everything clean than have poison into it and then die that slow death. Even if that poison is going to kill me in two years time, I know that poison is going to kill me. Hmm. But then I, what's the end ending? Hmm. You're six foot under and you've got Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer to. All that questioning. Exactly. Allah. So that's where the choices you make in life is, you know, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm, I mean, I, I'm no saint or no angel or anything. I've made mistakes in, in my life and stuff. I understand. But, if you don't learn from them mistakes, then you've not learned anything. Mm. Then you've not understood why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps making you do them mistakes mm. again and again and again. Like I'm like even now as we mm. speak, mm. I struggle financially, to, especially since dad passed away, mm -hmm. to pay the mortgage and stuff. It's It's been an absolute crazy time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. After paying for a few funerals and stuff, mm -hmm. it's been hard because mm -hmm. all my money and investment used to go to dad and everything. And unfortunately, dad didn't use the money properly. I don't know what he did and stuff, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. At the end of the day, they have their circumstances. Exactly. They did what they could do best. Exactly. And but the, the way fact that, that he's instilled this the ethics of earning halal in you yeah that in itself is yeah. an incredible achievement massive, for someone massive. to be so conscious of that yeah uh from that young age mm. yeah and obviously you you it's been it's been passed on to you yeah and the credit goes to your yeah. parents and I'll, and I'll never forget it i will Subhan never forget it Subhan. but yeah. especially for the youth again coming back to the youngsters mm. that are that are listening it's so easy to make quick money isn't it easy Honestly, you know, like, a bit of drugs, yeah, a little bit here, easy. a little bit there. Nobody yeah. will know. It's quick money coming in. I mean, in. back in the days, you know, we, we grew up where, when there was the BMP, the National Front. Mm -hmm. We grew up when there was like, you know, racism was at, at its forefront. You okay. know, we used to get people bullying us. Uh, some of my uh, our friends who were from, like, you know, bad crew and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, they got into trouble. But one thing they always, like my father and everything taught was, you're accountable for your own actions, Allah. you know, and this is one thing that we believed is like, if you started a fight for one reason and it's your fault, you're on your own. Mm. But if somebody's mm. coming to beat you up and 
it's not your fault yeah, yeah. then we'll stand up behind you we won't let anyone like just get beat up for anything and we grew up in that environment so from Moss side to long side you know oh Moss side was rough back then exactly I even the, like when we're down ben chill and stuff back in the days is it was it was a it was a tough crowd you know mm-hmm. and then later on everyone's like oh yeah we're this gang and that gang like yeah fine sure nice one <laughs> <laughs> good for you in it but it's, it's it's how it's how you see life like when you're growing up you don't see these Allah, things Allah, Allah, and then Allah. at a later age this is why i'm not afraid of sharing my experiences and i believe nobody else should be like there shouldn't be a, this curtain saying if you talk about depression or cry in front of a camera or anything like that, you know, it's, it's going to be hard for you. I remember doing one video when I first started my YouTube channel. I did a video. When did you actually begin that? Do you remember? Uh, I remember coming across a video where she was about 13 years old. It was a bit longer than that when was I did it? my first, because I had to delete that video. The only reason I deleted it was because okay. one of the people that inspired me to do the photography mm. uh, was basically, um, he said, you shouldn't put that video up on there because people will see that video, see you as a weak person and not oh, come to you okay. as a business. And that, that was my first video that I did. Uh, and I deleted everything of it. It was about my depression, what I went through and stuff. And if I'm correct, it's called Akil's World for... Uh, Akil's World, yeah? Yeah, so Akil's World on Instagram is my personal one. So if okay. anybody wants to follow me or say hi or anything, they can just follow me no, and send me a message. I think, I think we <laughs> should use this, this, this opportunity. If people are, hmm? The spellings for uh, A K double E L. Yeah, and then uh, Akil's World, yeah? Akil's World, basically. So yeah. Follow that for, for, for further inspiration to know Insta- his, his if journey if I more inspire, detail. Yeah, that's fine. Share the message. Yeah, yeah. We may well know people in the community that mm. are suffering but don't have many people to turn to. No, do you know what? Another time, the professional advice is just information being regurgitated it's again same, and yeah. again and again. Yeah. But seeing it from a personal pr- uh, view, yeah. somebody giving his own perspective on it and how he endured and came out of it yeah. in the positive way yeah that could be a lot more impactful it is because like a lot of the time if you go like i know people have gone to counseling and it's yeah. the same crap over and over again, again. again yeah. it's like the reading of a textbook yeah. they're not talking from experience See, they have a protocol they've got to follow exactly and they're not going to do anything beyond that exactly they, and whereas you would give guidelines. your own personal touch yeah to how you recovered and what worked for you yeah and maybe that could work for somebody else inshallah i hope so because it's like like i've always said to everyone is your journey, my journey are different. Mm. Your pain, my pain, my threshold is different. Yep. But one thing we can relate to is the stories that we can tell and the mm. stories we mm. can share. Mm. So if, if our f- fathers before us, you know, had a story and they were shared, today maybe a lot of us wouldn't be in this situation from a mental Agreed. aspect. Agreed. And the mental aspect ha- impacts a lot of things. I put on a lot of weight because I used my mental health as an excuse to not look after myself. Oh, I looked okay. after everyone else, but, yourself. but myself. Ah, oh, okay. Because I didn't see myself as a, as important enough to look after. See, myself. that's interesting because, and if I'm not wrong, you're the eldest from your siblings. I'm a twin. twin. Uh, I, uh, I'm the youngest by 15 minutes or 10 minutes, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Okay, but even then, as in, but a lot of the responsibility fell on you. It's on me, yeah. And there'll yeah. be many out there who has been the eldest sibling. Generally in our tradition, it's like the eldest one has to put up with all the pressures Everything. and has to provide Ex- for others. Exactly. If you go back <laughs> home, you'll, you'll hear these comments where I'm not going to get married until all my sisters are married yeah. and everyone's married because I've taken father's uh, shoes on and, and mm. that's what I'm working on. Yeah. And in that predicament, in that situation, many times you'll forget about your own health. You do. Your 100%. own mental health. You've yeah. put others before you, which Allah will reward you for. Yeah. But it comes with a big uh, hit back, isn't it? A massive hit back because the way you look at it is, and I, 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 I realized it at a later stage, is if you don't look after yourself and something happens to you, who's going to look after the ones that you're caring for? Beautiful. Yeah. So it's no point you looking after someone else and then your health is getting done for because you're the main prime aspect of it. Mm, mm. You know, it's like a car. If you take the engine out of the car, how are you going to start the car? Mm, so you mm. need something that's going to power it to to make it work. And so your your, that, your health. You mentioned at that at at college university you were weighing twelve pounds. Uh, twelve stones. Twelve st- stones. Sorry. Twelve stones. Twelve stones. Yeah. At this stage, where were you now? <laughs> I was about fluctuating between seventeen and eighteen stones. Allah. Yeah, seventeen and eighteen stones. 
and I just put it on. I didn't even realize my clothes were getting bigger. I, I just bought bigger clothes and stuff. Um, and then I think the, the highest I ever went to was almost 22 stones. Wow. And I was about 43% body fat, 43, 44% body fat. Okay. But I never realized it myself because I hated looking at myself in the mirror. Mm. I absolutely despised myself. So I, I never noticed the, the amount of weight um, I was putting on. And I used it as an excuse that this has happened to me. Let's go and eat. This has happened to me. Let's go and eat. Mm. You know, and I, even when I wasn't hungry, I'd eat for no reason. I was just I was just away. Like, I mean, I, I love chocolate. <laughs> Literally, Who I, I love chocolate. Who doesn't? And I was just like smashing chocolates <laughs> like nothing. And then right. I was having coke a lot, not the snorting type or All anything right, yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah just drink. to be clear, yeah. But just like a lot of drinks, fizzy and everything. I was drinking oh, up until August last year. I was drinking roughly anything between seven to ten cans a day of coke, whether it's diet or oh, not, wow. and about two three cans of Monster Yo. per day. Right, and the drinks didn't do anything to me. It, I was addicted to the taste. Okay, and this is where I was like, I was just drinking and drinking and drinking. I would order a burger, right, from either Uber Eats or Just Eat or wherever. Mm. I would order a burger just for a can of Coke, and I would still eat the burger. And I'm like, yeah, this is good. Not for the drink, just for the drink. I okay. was that bad. I was that like having problems in my okay. life. A lot of this sounds like. During COVID, isn't it? Just before COVID. Just before COVID. Yeah, and yeah. then you hit the real downside where you're now weighing 22 stones. Yeah, because my, my, dad, my dad became, he ended up in hospital just before COVID. Okay. Uh, this is where I basically, back in the NHS, was working there. Um, and he was in hospital for three months during COVID. Nobody could see him. And because I worked in the units... Um, I was the only one who had access to him, mm. even towards the end of his life and, uh, in the hospital. So yeah, that put you in that position for a reason, yeah. wasn't it? Because, like, if it didn't happen or didn't get that job in the hospital, yeah. you know, nobody would, have seen nobody would have seen him. He would not have seen anyone. No, no. And on his last last dying days, the, the specialist came up to me and said, we need to put a pacemaker in his heart. If we don't, he might not survive. He sat me down in an off this like long table, sat there, and the other nurse there. And I just looked at him. I said, look, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bless my dad with four breaths only, he's not going to take the fifth. So mm. you can put the heart pacemaker, whatever you want to, if you think it's going to help. I'm not going to stop you from, from doing that. But if he's blessed with only four breaths, he's it's not okay. taking the fifth. And that's exactly. Woke up in the morning. Went to uh, five o'clock in the morning mm, mm. and got a phone call saying your father's just passed away. And I had to be strong yeah, again yeah, for my family yeah. again. I had to be absolutely strong again for them. And when I got to got to the hospital, they were like, Do you know what? The way he passed away, he heard there was another patient in the in the bed uh, next to him. Mm. The Azan came on his phone. He basically did dua, my dad. And at this stage, my dad my dad was technically brain dead. Mm. At, at this stage okay. Um, okay they had literally taken off everything the life support and everything but for him to hear the azan Lift make azan. dua and pass away face it proper way as well facing the qibla yeah Subhan. and Subhan. passed away and that Allah. that that changed that was i still had to be strong for that and take on to. the response and it's all these knockbacks that i've had where i could have easily given up like even when i when i was married and stuff you know, marriage lasted about like 13 months or stuff, but it just didn't work out. And I won't ever say anything bad about the person because it's no point. Everyone's got their own test. Maybe at that time we didn't understand what the test was, but Alhamdulillah, whatever the reason was, the, the reason was, and all I pray for everyone who's been in my life in the past, present, and whoever will be in the future, whether you're in my life for good reasons or bad reasons. I don't see a bad reason, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I see Allah's putting you as... As a blessing, okay, that's that's the positivity within you coming out, isn't it? It has to yeah. be, you have to be positive about mm. everything. Because I used to have suicidal thoughts, I used to want to like jump off a bridge or anything like that, but something always stopped me. Something always stopped me. Like, I don't know if it was, it's like something like always felt I was pushing me back. And it's like, whether it was the dreams that I was having of being, being in Medina or hearing the Azan randomly. 
or whatever something was always always something always always me. held on to you always like when i was growing up i used to see things right? okay literally right i didn't used to believe in the things that i used to see okay yeah i used to think oh yeah i'm just stressed and stuff mm. and alhamdulillah over, over time got in control of of things and stuff okay and then just you just forget about it but the biggest thing is is the most important thing is you got to believe in yourself you got to believe the purpose of life itself we might not know what the purpose of life is but as soon as i started reading the quran sharif and stuff probably the english translations and stuff being at peace with myself was most important and okay. only then i could learn how to how much of a role did did the religion quran play huge in you getting back to where you wanted to be so because now we've got two discussions we've got to have mm. your fitness and health yeah along with your spiritual health yeah how do you bring the two together so did they go hand in hand with it all it was all down to the mental health aspect i knew every single thing that was affecting me that happened all, all the time from me giving up on my religion to questioning my religion mm. to questioning life itself family and everything and using my everybody's excuses of of eating okay to put on to get this way and be unhealthy and and stuff like that so i was like okay what's affecting my life and what how do i need to get rid of them aspects mm. to focus on me first okay so at that stage i knew there was the gap in my head was i'm not consistent with my prayers i was right. the only time i would pray is when i needed something from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even when i would ah. needed something from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i prayed as a as i kind of forced myself to pray when you force for yourself for the sake of it for yeah. the sake of it just for the sake of it and But even then it was like for your own gains. For your own gains exactly. Mm. You know, you've got Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala who's passed the message through Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to us all and we're trying to use it as a as as a gain for us. Mm. You know, this is what my mentality in the past kind of used to be. And then I was like, okay. I said to my family, but just in August just before August I said I mm. just need everyone to step aside. Just give me my space for 2 weeks. Don't tell me about any problems. Don't tell me the house is falling apart. or whatever just give me two weeks i need this because for 44 years of my life all i've done is look after everyone so the rest of the community exactly. and people around you let me try and focus on okay. what this so my first thing was i knew it was family because of all the issues the second thing was me so let's say family wasn't in the picture okay i have two things to rely on after that my faith and me as a human being mm. if my faith isn't there then i've got myself to rely on Now I don't believe in myself. I didn't trust myself because every time I tried to do something, mm. I used to fail and you think, "Oh, why am I failing?" and mm. stuff like mm-hmm. this. So, so where do you go back in that cycle? Exactly. Yeah. But then when the Quran and I was listening to like different podcasts and stuff that it teaches you a, a message that you if our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam can forgive his enemy, then who are we? Sure. Who are we compared to that? I mean, you mm. mentioned so many family pep uh family members that passed away yeah if you look at the life of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam exactly he never saw his father yeah he him and umm ayman being the only two people to bury his mother yeah so he buried his yeah. mother with his own hands when he was six years old yeah. as he moves on he buries his wife khadija mm. then his uncle his grandfather yeah and then for people the most difficult relations to come across our children Yeah. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam buried his four sons and three daughters with his own hand. Yeah. The only one that lived after him was Sayyidah Fatima. Yeah. Khatun al-Jannah radhiyallahu anha. This this is these are tribulations. Yeah. And it's, it that's inspiration for for us. Yeah. That when you do lose a loved one, look at the example of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Exactly. He lost four sons, yeah. three daughters, two of his wives that he buried with his own hand. Yeah. his mother with his own hands at the age of 6 yeah that is traumatic and that. the thing is until we until we read our scriptures properly yeah. until we read the quran sharif or the you know, the hadiths properly we wouldn't ever understand that mm. and we wouldn't just see that journey because we're too oh we need this for this dunya we need this for that dunya yes we do but how are you going to get there how are you going to get these rewards from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah. it's like when you go to you know you got a tesco club card Mm. And they give you rewards. Yeah. You're not going to get the reward until you put money into it yes. to get something out of it. Yep. Yep. That's the exact same thing. You know, <laughs> you're not going to get anything from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala if you're not going to put anything into it. Now you can't sit back and say, "Oh, it's not your kismat." Yes. 
you, you know, your kismet's already predefined. You have to get up and make, make the make choices. Effort, yeah. You yeah. have to yeah. make an effort. You know, if you don't. Okay, going back to the health aspect then. Mm. How do you pick up on that? So once I kind so of... from 22 stones. Yeah. Where are you right now then? I'm just on, I'm 16 and a half stones as of this morning. As of this morning? Yeah. <laughs> okay, in between. Let's go through that. What happened? So August, I weighed 20.9 uh, 20 stones. Okay. Uh, 20.9 stones. Was it? Yeah, 20.9 stones in, in August last year. And I was like, okay, this is just spiraling out of control. I'm an ambitious person. I want to get my finances sorted. I want to get my whole life sorted. Okay. Let's put family aside, put everything aside, and put only me and my faith together. I got up every single morning. I read the Hajjit around about three o'clock. Okay. I was ready. I read Surah Yasin. I got, and then I was like, okay, now my mind is positive. Now, remember before this, I used to listen to a lot of music. I still do every now and then, but I used to heavily listen to any music, right? Okay. But when I was listening to the Quran Shiv, I was more schooled, I was more relaxed, my mind was more clear. So, so I got up every like without even an alarm clock, right? I used to wake up for 3 a.m. For 3 a.m. Wow. And so I sleep around about 11 o'clock, wake up at 3 o'clock, tired, and read the Hajjit. Read, and then read Surah Yasin. Half four, I was in the gym. Okay. Like half four. So I used to post on my Instagram. I'm on the tread uh, on the uh, stairmaster. Back okay. then, I couldn't do. I I lasted about a minute or two on the stairmaster <laughs> before having a heart attack and stuff. Yeah. And now I'm the a little after of the months. I'm doing like 45 minutes uh, on the stairmaster. But it was that journey. So I thought, okay, Allah has woken me up. Yep. To read the Hajjat, right? He's given me the power that He hasn't give blessed anyone else with to wake up in at the morning time. at yeah. this time to read the regardless of how tired yeah. I am. Got up, made dua, read Surah Yasin or any any chapter in the Quran Sharif, and then half four I said, Look, "I'm up. Maybe Allah wants me to get fit." <laughs> I got up, got to the gym. See, I, I like the positivity, mm. the fact that you're using every opportunity you've got in a more positive note. Yeah, the fact that you're up, Allah's made me. Get Allah's up. made me do it. The Hajjad, yeah. it's for a reason. Yeah, if I'm going gym, maybe Allah wants it to be happening. Exactly. So working in my favor. Yeah. Because Allah's creating the path for you. That's how I, I looked at it. Okay. I was like, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's, he's, he's showing me the path. Okay. He's, he's like, you, when we make dua, and we say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give me help. Mm. And then what I used to notice in the years is like, people used to come in front of you or your parents to provide you help. And we used to turn around and say, no, no, Allah, Allah will provide you. It's okay. And then we turn that person down. Mm. Then you, you, you take a step back from all that. You go, hang on. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send this person to help me that and I've just turned them down exactly so that's that's how I look at it so mm. I'm like okay I'm up half or every single day I'm gonna do it first couple of weeks yeah I didn't believe in myself because I always failed I did it for a week I would go back to eating all the crap I had the choices made so I knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me the calling through waking me up in the morning okay. making okay. me read the hajjat so that was my calling that for me embraced me on trying to read five times a day in the mass. I mean, I, I read about three at the moment, but I'm still trying. The The thing for, from there was, do I stop or do I carry on? Hmm. If Allah SWT has given me the power to wake up and read the Hajjad, then I'm going to make sure that I am fit enough to make sujood and breathe properly. I used to struggle breathing. Hmm. So I was 46% body fat. I was my, this, this is now a 2XL. I was a 4XL. I went from a 4XL to 3XL. This is 2XL now, and this is baggy. Even that is baggy, yes. Yeah. So, and this, I only bought this like two months ago. And, and it's already become baggy. Exactly. So, inshallah, as, as I lose more weight and I build more muscle, inshallah, over the next 12 months, which is the next plan, you know, I'll be in like an XL or something. But I used that every single day, got mm -hmm. up, prayed, gym, work, straight after that, gym in the afternoon, Isha Namaz sleep that's it if i did any wedding shoots or any stuff i worked around it i got to that i basically disciplined myself to a point where some people will say on this journey you need to take it slowly okay. otherwise you're going to fail i was like in from my past experience if i take it slowly i'm going to be drinking still coke i'm going to still probably like getting pringles or crisps and something oh okay. yeah 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 you know mashallah i've done good for a week and i'll reward yeah. myself Give with a piece a cheat day. exactly 
since August to now, I've not cheated on anything. No, I don't believe in cheat meals. Um, cheat um, days. Cheat days. None of that crap. If you're eating a good lifestyle, I changed my lifestyle. Mm. I tried so many diets over the, the years. Keto diet, low carb diet, um, Atkins, you name it. I tried everything. Okay. Okay. But one thing you have to realize, if it doesn't fit your lifestyle, it's not going to work for you. Work. Okay. So the biggest change was half my family's diabetic. So I started learning about what diabetes is, what it does, and it's worse than cancer. It slowly kills off your organs. Mm. It can blind you. I mean, my mom's be my mom was in six months in hospital. She almost lost the leg because of her diabetes. She's slowly going blind. That's how serious diabetes is, uh, and people don't real realize that. And inshallah, in future podcasts and stuff, I'll I'm, I'll I'll talk about it more because the more understanding I get. Mm. And I was like, okay. Now I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop every single thing. So the 1st of August, I stopped everything. All my addiction took off. Two weeks, I was having headaches. I was struggling. Everyone at work was like, you ain't going to last, bro. You're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're going to be dead. I'm like, no, I'm going to do it. I started drinking water. I replaced basically, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, fizzy pop with sparkling water. Okay. I'd add fresh lemon juice in there or a bit of apple cider vinegar in there and drink that through the day. Okay. Then I replaced, uh, I have a little, I, I drink about three and a half, four liters of water that kept me full. So I knew my mental health was improving because I was using my Dean and my knowledge to understand it more okay. to help me with my training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the first two, three weeks, I was not only just listening to the Quran uh, and waking up, but the, the mistake I was making was I was listening to music when I was in the gym. Which is common, isn't it? Which is common. So I would put my headphones on, put like top 20 hip hop tracks on R&B tracks on and listen to it or mm. Eminem or any, anything like that to give me like some gym motivation. It wasn't until the fourth week of my training when I switched it and uh, from listening to rap music and stuff in the gym or in, uh, in my daily lifestyle mm. and stuff mm. like that. Just Quran in and, the gym. In the gym. So my music is, I listen to like Surah Yaseen okay. or, you know, Aital Kursi or anything. So whilst you're training, you've got Surah Yaseen thing. Surah Yaseen thing. Because wow. like in my head, like, so to say the time, uh, so I'm in the gym, you usually say 45 minutes, okay. uh, an hour or two, whatever. And Surah Yaseen probably like, with, with the lava, then so probably like two hours long or whatever. Mm. That's my gym time. Wow. And there's a scientific thing that was done uh, where Agora combined the Talawat of the Quran to four or five different soundtracks of music. Okay. They found that the soundtrack in the, the, the music was disheartening the soul and everything and your heartbeat. They put the Quran from different perspectives of different girats uh, from different uh, readers. Not a single move. Peace. It was literally Salaam. the wavelengths Salaam. did not move. It was literally just peaceful. Uh, so let, let me try it. And okay, so then you actually it. tried it. I tried it after four weeks. Wow. For the youngsters again, try it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the month of Ramadan. It's the month of Ramadan. Let's, as let's, well. let's pick it up in the month of Ramadan. Yeah, Just yeah. this month, Dilawat was in the gym. If Even with the, the translation. So you're pushing yourself, you're learning, you're putting Deen into you as well, and you're making your, your body stronger. But spiritually. How, how, how do you focus? So, Quran's playing, the translation plays in, and you're like, or oh, you're, you're breathing. You're there. It's your breathing, isn't it? So, Allah, who? Allah, so you got to do that stuff, eh? You can if you want to. It's not always going to work. Everyone's different. <laughs> but it's how you mentally f focus on yourself. Because so if I'm... you think about it, music can push you to a certain limit. But is it pushing you in the right way? Mm. The Quran, will it ever push you in the wrong way? No. Exactly. The words, especially if you don't understand the Arabic versions and you're listening to it in the translation, you will not only get the inspiration of the stories of our prophets, the struggles, mm -hmm. how they push through. You don't need a fake song to tell you how to push hard. But you've got real stories in the Quran that so tell you how our so prophets hard. and the prophets followers pushed mm -hmm. to, through the battles, through everything to even pass a message. Look at our brothers and sisters in uh, Palestine at the moment. You know, look at how are they fighting? How and strong that even exactly. Is. If, if if anything, mm. they have taught us, and they've and what what's their Subhan. power? The Subhan. Quran. Subhan. I think we've come to an end of today's podcast. You know, the timing. My cameraman's on my case now. <laughs> but a few lessons. I think I've what I picked up. Every day is an opportunity. Every day. Every opportunity comes to your way. Use it to your advantage. Yeah. And thank Allah for the opportunity He's given you. Yeah. Make the most of it. 100%. And 
your story and, and inspiration you've given, uh, especially through your cousin, where today's my day. Today's my day, yeah. I, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm going to forget that. I'm not going to forget that. In fact, you know, the title for today's podcast is going to be Today's My Day. Yeah? It's, 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 it's amazing. It's amazing. No. May Allah uh, reward you, uh, Bajan, for, for taking the time Ameen. out, inspiring me. And most likely, definitely the viewers as well. Yeah. And inshallah, we'll have you back for further stories, further inspiration. Definitely, after inshallah. Speech. Even on my, if people want to follow me, I'll be doing my full story on on my video. Oh yeah. So just to finish off, the your uh, Instagram page is fat to fit. Fat uh, fat to fit. Akil's world is yeah. going to be my just my fat loss journey, okay. and Akil's world is my personal one. It's open. To That's anyone. your emotional, mental health, and I'll all put that. Everything journey. on that. Anything. I'm an open book. I won't hide anything. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.